I think it's the strangeness of the song which seduces people in that. I don't think people know what it's about, but that doesn't bother them. I think it's the strangeness that they like. All good children need travel and choose. Drive your problems from here. First of all, it's immensely catchy. <laughs> I mean, that's the first thing. Immensely catchy. It eats into your brain, and you know it's going to stay there forever. And the other thing that happens, nobody had heard of her. So she had this wild name, Tanita Tukram. Where does she come from? Run my hands and know you'll never be More than twist in my sobriety An 18-year-old should, in a sense, not be able to do that, you know? She was the right age and she just went back. How big is big? It's, it's only three letters long, but it's it's kind of, it, it tells you what it was. Up in arms and chasing home All good children and all of a sudden, this person I'd been teaching a few <laughs> months before was there on top of the pops. You don't really own that success. It's not something you've necessarily worked for. When I was younger, I thought, who am I? Am I really supposed to be doing this? I've just been a musician, or not even just been a musician. I've just been a kind of pop star, actually, which is even worse. Look, my eyes are just holograms. Look, your love has drawn red from my hands, from my hands. Sangen Twist My Sobriety har blitt så stor at den på mange måter tilhører hele verden. Akkurat som Tanita Tikaram selv. Britisk, men født i Tyskland, med en far fra India og Fiji, og en mor fra Malaysia. Ikke rart at hun har valgt å bosette seg i nettopp verdensmetropolen London. Da hun debuterte som 18-åring, ble hun nok oppfattet som pophistoriens mest alvorlige tenåringsstjerne, som med sin dype, mystiske stemme, regelrett eide slutten av 80-tallet. Vi kommer vel alle til å huske Tanita som den store stjernen i 88. Men for å få hele historien må vi dra til den fredelige lille forstadsbyen Basingstoke, hvor militærbarnet Tanita Tikaram landet etter mange år på konstant flyttefot. Jeg bare følte litt av en utsider, i en måte som var veldig funnig. Jeg visste ikke de sosiale normene, og kanskje den sosiale forandringen helped me as a writer, made me much more focused on, on cultivating my artistic side. Alle unge mennesker trenger å bli sett av noen for å utvikle seg, og for den unge Tanita var denne noen engelsklæreren på videregående, Terry Cree. Hello! How are you? Good lord! You have... You look younger. No, I don't. I yeah, don't. That's yes, a lie. You do. Yes, you I do. Don't. Yes. The last time we spoke, yeah. face to face. Yes. Was 1989, I reckon. Well, that would be 28, 27 years. 27 years. Let's go have a tea. Let's, Let's go have a tea. Talk yeah. About okay. It. Thank you. Thank you. He was really interested in in us as individuals. I think that's quite rare in a teacher. You get lots of talented students. Lots. But the thing about Tanita, I'm going to really embarrass you here. <laughs> really, she had that thing that you really want, which is engagement. You know, you are the model of, as a teacher, <laughs> what you hope for. Really. Thank you. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Which, I mean, it, it, it's That's a, great. Thank but, you. No, no, it's true. It's true. Uh, you know, it, yeah. it, 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 it sounds a bit buffy, but uh, yeah, it, yeah. it's not really. I ungdomstiden tilbringer Tanita i tillegg nesten all sin fritid på byens bibliotek. This is one of those books when you're a kid that you go crazy over, and the movie. To have this moment of really getting into literature at that age, between 14 to 18, I'm quite happy that I was kind of a bit, not, not unhappily lonely, but had a, quite a lot of solitude. So you want somebody who's questioning, somebody who's thoughtful, someone who's serious, and someone who reads and, you know, and, and has mm. original thoughts of their own. You know, mm. there. Thank you. Gotcha. <laughs> Sorry, thank you. And you can write as well. Skrive, ja. For det er nettopp nå at inspirasjonen til en viss hitlåt dukker opp i hodet til tenåringsjenta. When I was younger, I, I sort of thought, if you didn't write 
very quickly. It wasn't really inspired. And I had that very naive artistic inspiration. It has to come and has to be in 10 minutes. And then you have to capture it. And then it's in the jar and it's finished. This My Sobriety was very particular because I remember that the whole song was written except the phrase twist in my sobriety. And I had this piece of paper on the floor staring at me and I'd sort of write twist in my gravity, twist in my anything that ended in this it's a, <laughs> and then at one point I just put twist in my sobriety, <laughs> is that going to work? And it kind of did and that ended up being the song. Med en handfull sanger og en dommelig tro på seg selv, tar Tanita et stort valg. So basically, before you go to university in England, you can have a year off. My mum said to me, OK, if you want to be a musician, you've got a year to go and get a record contract. And obviously she said that thinking, whatever. <laughs> so, and I was looking in the back of a music magazine and I saw that there was something called the acoustic room at the Mean Fiddler. So I sent in my tape and they actually phoned me and said oh we have a spot for you you weren't paid and you had to sell your own tickets but I, I kind of went oh yeah I've got to. and actually the night that I performed there was the Irish songwriter Paul Brady who was performing in the main room and his agent came into my room to have a cup of tea and on stage was this girl from Basingstoke uh, and her voice hit me Immediately, the huskiness of it, a beautiful storytelling voice. Agenten Paul Charles had gjort karriere med folk som Van Morrison og Paul Brady. På dette tidspunktet var han på utkikk etter sin neste store artist. At one table near the front of the stage, there was about eight people at it, and they were talking, rapping the whole way through. She stopped singing her song, kept playing her guitar. She walked over to the side of the stage, and she stared down at these people until one by one they became conscious of her presence. You know, and, and it turned out it was her first public gig. And I thought, wow, this is, she's, she's got stagecraft. And so I left a message, you know, that I'd, I'd like to meet her. I lived in Basingstoke, so I had to get from Harlesden to, to Basingstoke before the trains finished. And everyone in the room was going, oh God, he wants, Paul Charles wants to meet you. He's a really important agent. <laughs> so, and I was like, well, I've got to catch a train. <laughs> Sorry. Selv om Paul Charles ble sittende alene med tekoppen sin den kvelden, var han fast bestemt på at han hadde funnet personen han hadde lett etter. Tanita derimot hadde sine tvil. But when you're a kid, you're just like, oh, okay, then. <laughs> you're not really thinking. I was just like, oh, yeah, great. Men Paul Charles har full tiltro til Tanita. Han er helt bestemt på at reisen med Tanita Tikaram skal føre dem rett inn i musikkhistoriens ypperste skattekammer. This is the Warner Music Vault where we store all the original master tapes for all the recordings um, Warner Music have made over the past 40 years. Um, we have tapes from The Pretenders here, Fleetwood Mac, Prince, all original master tapes. Love will tear us apart from Joy Division. Very rare that anybody can come and get in here, let alone film in here. Down here we have master tapes for Ancient Heart, and this would be Twist in My Sobriety. This is where it's recorded. So these are the producers, Rod Argent and Peter Van Hook. We are in the middle of something else and we knew it would take time. And, and Pete said, oh, Paul's asked us to listen to this stuff. And I, I put it on. They were very rough demos. And I thought, oh, I don't know. Producenten Rod Argent had been a songwriter and pianist in the legendary British rock band The Zombies. Well, no one told me about her, the way she lies. Nå blir de sett på som en av rockens fremste pionerer, men på slutten av 80-tallet var ikke interessen like stor. I'm in that lovely position now of having a bedrock of royalty from some classic tracks, which gives you the freedom to do what you want to do. I think at the time, both of us actually needed to try and make a good income. Hoproducenten, trommelsen Peter Van Hook, hadde heller ikke sitt beste år. Hans tid, som Van Morrisons foretrukkende trommis var over. 80-tallsfenomenet Mike and the Mechanics var på pause. Og det siste Rod og Peter hadde laget sammen, var denne fotball-TV-kjenningen. I didn't get it. 
I, I, I didn't get it. I did it as a favour for Paul Charles, who had completely seen it. It was only when I started to work for it. We realised how good the songs were. Yeah, her lyrical ideas. How unique her writing was. It's not clichéd at all, and it's not pretentious. It just works in a beautiful way. Very special, I think. Oh, got your need travelling shoes Drive your problems from here Oh, good people read good books Now your conscience is clear I hear you talk, girl Now your conscience is clear I just think that you feel things very intensely when you're that age. I'm not sure that I necessarily write like that now, because I think the language is quite bonkers, but it's the kind of language that you would write if you were a, a bookish student. I'll never hear you and never do what you say. You know, you obviously don't have as much experience when you're that age of actual emotional drama but, but you've started to grasp it. I mean, I remember when I wrote She Is Not There, it was the second song I ever wrote. I was, you know, 18 years old, and I thought, I'm going to write something which is as good as the Beatles, and it'll, it'll be number one around the world, and it was. The way she looked, the way she had to have the colour of her hair. Her voice was soft and cool, her eyes were clear and bright, but she's not there. If you're a sensitive person, you get heavily involved with films, with literature and everything, with music. Because of that, when you're young, you can write things which are, you know, maybe profound as much to a pretentious a word, but has a depth of feeling and actually can grasp something. Look, my eyes are just holograms. Look, your love has drawn me from my hands. From my hands, you know you'll never be More than twist in my sobriety More than twist in my sobriety Actually, Twist in My Sobriety is not about love. It's, I think it's quite a political song, but... Um, to feel that isolated is also the, the perspective of a teenager. Um, all good children need travelling shoes, drive your problems from here. All good people read good books, now your conscience is clear. I was probably saying, all of this culture and this education, is it, is it a way to distance yourself from what is really awful and dark in our, in our world and our society? And actually, even though that seems a bit of an exaggerated position, when I think about today and I think about the refugee crisis and how unable we are in Europe to, to actually react, it does seem quite relevant. It does seem kind of not such an exaggerated position, actually. It's funny that a kid thinks that. Ved siden av de sterke politiske tekstene hadde dessuten Tanita Tikaram et annet hemmelig våpen. Den dype, mystiske stemmen. She sounds so relaxed and confident in that, because it was just done with the original guitar. Problemet var bare at Tanita Tikaram hadde null profesjonell erfaring. Hvordan skulle de få en tenåring til å bære et helt seriøst album? I didn't even have any knowledge of playing with other musicians. I was a kid in a bedroom writing songs. She was always comfortable playing her songs. So you've got to recreate that same atmosphere. The original performances were done purely to her guitar. And once we got that, then we could build up and we could be dramatic or restrained and she wouldn't be lacking in energy or give too much to try and compete. She would just be confident in the essence of the song and we would build the thing around that. So it was that lovely combination of a couple of, even by that time, fairly old geezers and this really young, naive but unique talent. 113 beats. See, even then we weren't uh, going crazy. 
Men de manglet ett element for at Twisted My Sobriety skulle bli den perfekte låta. Oddly enough, this read I made this morning. If I stick it into the oboe, it might work. It works. Om du på slutten av 80-tallet skulle ha fått igjen noe bostrof eller to, ja, da var det helt klart denne fyren du skulle ringe. Malcolm Messiter. Jeg fikk den kallet. Um, I put the oboe in the car, I drove over there, I got out the oboe, I looked at a piece of manuscript paper, a bit like this. I listened to the drum kit. I can't really do it, but you know how it sounds like. <laughs> um, and I went down. Sound familiar? Oh, it just kind of makes it a, a, one of those magic records. It, it's it's so associated with the oboe, the song. And there's not that many songs that you would kind of think have an oboe on them. And then later on, something very similar. The emotional content of that song is somehow amplified and encapsulated by the sound of the oboe. Because the oboe is almost by definition an emotional sound. To me, the oboe adds to that song a sense of foreboding, something like a, a dark cloud. Hard to put into words, but if we could put it into words, we wouldn't need an oboe. And they say, thank you very much, Cheerio. I never met any of the other contributors to this recording. Never met them, they weren't there. Med å bo en på plass var Twisted My Sobriety og albumet Ancient Heart klart for utgivelse. Well, apparently Warner Brothers predicted it would sell 40,000 copies. There's a good tradition of love and hate Stand by the fires Første singelen Good Tradition gjorde det helt ok i England. Men da Twisted My Sobriety blev sluppet, begynte det å skje ting over hele Europa, ikke minst på grund av en mystisk musikkvideo. Jeg var veldig glad at Gerard de Thane kom opp med noen gode visualer for Twisted My Sobriety, som gjorde den sangen mysterious, og kanskje gjorde meg veldig mye mysterious. Alle gode kjøpene må travel og kjøpene. Han gikk til Bolivia og skjøpte den footage. very bleak and it, there's some wisdom in the faces and it sort of made me look like those things. <laughs> Sorry, I was shot in a studio in Wembley somewhere. I think a lot of people thought because of the video that I was Native American Indian. Actually, I was not at all. <laughs> so. I'm a kid from Basingstoke and an army kid. Sweet and handsome, soft and pokey, you pig out till you've seen the light. I mean, it's not the worst identity that people could associate you with. The only problem is, is that that isn't really me. I'm not particularly dark and I'm not particularly mysterious. Often when people meet me, they still have an idea of me from that video and from being 18 years old, they go, oh my God, I didn't know you'd laugh or you're kind of goofy. And I'm like, well. For ideen om den alvorlige og mystiske tenåringen med den sofistikerte musikken tok Europa med storm. I løpet av noen måneder hadde albumet Ancient Heart spredt seg som ill i tørt gress. I think four million is sold. Noe som kom som en svært stor overraskelse på de fleste. Because the single sort of just like 
charted. Yeah. More or less straight away, yeah. didn't it? Yeah. It was it astonishing. Did. Yeah. And and all of a sudden, this person I'd been teaching a few <laughs> months before was there on top of the pops. Summer of 1988, I went to Istanbul. One evening, I went down into the bar. As we sat there drinking our champagne, they were, of course, playing music through the loudspeakers, as they often do in these bars. And uh, to my great surprise, I heard my oboe coming through the loudspeakers. That is the very first time I ever heard the finished recording. It did quite well, I gather. Speciellt i Skandinavia solgte Tanita Tikaram godt, og i Norge slo hun alle rekorder for en debuterende artist. Tina, uh, Tanita Tikaram, please, we're so pleased to have you with us. Welcome to Sweden, Tanita Tikaram. Thank you. For bare på noen måneder har denne lille 19-åringen blitt allemannseie i popverden. Og typisk nok, inte et sted i verden er hun mer populær enn i Norge. Hun synger så veldig fint, så er hun litt pian. Er dette en sånn ren sånn familieartist, dette her? Ja, jeg tror egentlig det. Det er nydelig å ha henne her. Hun er en asiatisk, eksotisk, tyskfødt, englandsboende sangerinne. Bare for å ha det helt klart. Så er dette sterke saker da. It's a good tradition of love and hate, <laughs> staying <laughs> by the water. No, a fireplace. Fireplace, fire yes. Mm. yes. How big is big? It's, it's only three letters long, but it's it's kind of, it, it tells you what it was, you know. For 18 months, I've never known anybody, but anybody, work as hard as she did, travelling around all over the world. And I think the other thing is, if you forget the sails for a minute, you would go to Norway, you know, and the traffic would stop. You would get on a plane and everybody on the plane would be trying to go down and get autographs and stuff. So it's, it's not so much the sales as the impact that it actually had and the way it changed her life uh, and the life of, of, of the people around her. You're just 19 years and um, what do you think about the prospect of your future career? Well, I hope to, to go on and make records and to... Uh just to be able to have some degree of consistency. Cause all the others they wanna take my life. Alle ville ha en bit av den nye popstjerneindlingen som bare måneder tidligere hadde vært en helt vanlig, litt ensom skoleelev. Oppfølgingspresset og nervene begynte å bli merkbart. There was a part of me that just felt very slightly burnt out maybe and a bit separated from my peer group and thinking perhaps I should really go back to university and I asked your advice and you were like uh, why would you <laughs> exactly <laughs> why would you do that having had this 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 sudden flowering out of nowhere in the world <laughs> I know it wasn't out of nowhere I know yeah. you're putting all the work before mm. I don't know but 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 that's yeah, yeah. that doesn't happen to everybody do you know no you said that you said well everyone can go to university yeah, exactly so but what you do is different exactly so, yeah it would have been closing something down but mm. really I don't yeah well I I didn't so you didn't oh I'd like to be but I want to be what you want to carry on Anita valgte å følge rådet fra læreren. Flere album fulgte i høyt tempo, men suksessen ble aldri den samme. Og gnissen og selvtilliten ble gradvis mer tynnslitt. Jeg tror at like mange mennesker som gjør noe som er veldig suksessfull når de er unge, du kind of føler seg litt disconnected fra det. Du føler ikke really at det suksess. Det er ikke noe du har nødvendig gjort. Og jeg tror at på et eller annet tidspunkt da jeg var unge, jeg tenkte... Who am I? Am I really supposed to be doing this? Is there anything else I can do? I've just been a musician, or not even just been a musician, I've just been a kind of pop star, actually, which is even worse. So um, I, I, I don't know anything at all, so I need to just live a bit. Do we do the things we really want to? Det er stopp. Karrieren måtte parkeres. I løpet av de neste årene flyter Tanita runt. I just was kind of trying to figure out who I was, I think. I can't explain it other than that in a kind of just wandering wandering around. I löpt av de näste 13 åren kommer det bara ett enaste album från Tanita Tikaram som heller fortaper sig i livet och litteraturen. Well, I think I stopped 
as well because I just thought maybe the records I was making were very good. So I was also just thinking, actually, what am I doing? I don't even know really what I'm doing. So that is quite a good reason to stop. Men så sker det noe. Musikken begynner å flyte, og Tanita Tikkaram lander i et nytt, mer voksent lydbilde. My real moment of finding the right balance, really finding a big love again for music, was actually uh, since Can't Go Back. Put your arms around me, sometimes I feel so cold. I think what's happened is I feel very close to the musicians I work with. I think much more that creativity is about collaborating now and not about being an artist, not about being unique or special. What we do is special because of this great energy that we are together, but not being Kanye West, no, <laughs> not being not being the center of the universe actually. It's your perspective, isn't it? It's how you see things when you're when you're in different stages of your life and there's nothing you can do about changing that perspective but having the time to grow up and that can't be rushed obviously. So I'm just happy that I'm here now and not there. Hun har også begynt å turnere på ny. Sommeren 2016 sto hun nok en gang på en stor scene i Norge. I think it's great, fun, and a lot more fun than when I was younger. Hi, it's lovely to see you. For selv om det snart er 30 år siden albumet Ancient Heart ble gitt ut, er hun fortsatt ikke glemt i noens gamle hjerter. That's a beautiful thing about writing. You can communicate with many people, that's... Yeah, before the internet there was the bedroom. <laughs> Och där er fortsatt en låt som alla fortsatt vill höra. It's funny to join in with a song like that because it is such a bleak song but it makes people happy. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yes. My eyes are just holograms. Look your love is jumping from my hands. From my and you know you'll never be more than twisting my sobriety more than twisting my sobriety more than if somebody else had written that song i would be envious of it so yes i cherish it i'm really happy that i ended up with this song Thank you.